Are you bored living a mediocre life? We were too, and we know how to change that. Each week, we'll leave our comfort zones to explore a new topic, then step onto our soapboxes, a safe space to sound off on our latest adventure. Come explore with us. All opinions are welcome. This is a mindset. This is a lifestyle. This is Siren Soapbox. Fellow explorers, thank you for diving in with us today. Our mission is to inspire each other out of our comfort zones to explore. Find out how you can explore with us on sirensoapbox.com. We have a link for a free month of Audible, information on upcoming challenges, and how you can get your hands on our coloring book, a great way to relax and explore art. Join us now, guaranteed to spark some exploration. Or get us out of our comfort zone by sending in a challenge. That is what inspired today's episode. A few months ago, we had a challenge sent in by longtime listener, first time poster, Bill Cole. It reads, I know the sirens are just eating up these challenges from their loyal fans. This next challenge is all about eating, but it is not about eating at all. This challenge is to eat a strictly vegan diet for five consecutive days. I'm not asking you to adopt a vegan lifestyle, meaning that you do not use any animal products in any way. I'm only asking that you eat only a vegan diet for five consecutive days. My daughter went vegan several years ago, leaving even more bacon in the world for me to eat. But because I love and admire my daughter, I have eaten vegan many, many meals, for many meals. Siren Sarah and I have gone for a longish stretches of eating vegan meals. We even have vegan Tuesdays for a while. And when I'm with my daughter, I often eat a vegan diet with her. I used to tell her I'll eat vegan food for lunch, but then I'll eat real food for dinner. She'd reply, vegan food is real food. And of course she's right. Sirens, get your tails in the garden. According to veganbits.com, 6% of US is vegan and worldwide the number is probably closer to 2%. Those are some pretty low luck numbers. Let's find out how the sirens did. If at any time the conversation gets too intense, the safe word is mango. mango. First up on her soapbox is Murph. I basically had no experience with vegan eating before we started this challenge. I found it very interesting to learn that there are things like bread and cereal that are not considered vegan for reasons like it's fortified with vitamins. I learned that chickpeas are my favorite non-animal protein to cook with. And I also learned that it's much easier than I thought. Trixie. And I learned it's much easier than I thought to switch out animal-based foods for those that are vegan. Milk, butter, and mayo, for example, I was easily able to find vegan substitutes for those and they were all very tasty. I thought this challenge would be further outside my comfort zone than it actually was. As someone who really enjoys cooking, I enjoyed the challenge of finding ways to make our staple meals plant-based. Tacos, for example, were super easy. I just used Beyond Beef instead of ground beef and they were a hit with my whole family. My nephew ate five tacos that night and he knew they were vegan. It, they were just tasty. We actually decided that we would make tacos with the Beyond Beef going forward. Another little gem I discovered is oat milk. If you like to have creamer in your coffee, I highly recommend giving oat milk a chance. I love the flavor and texture and I'm an oat milk fan and my coffee kind of girl for life now. I approached this challenge by first deciding which family meals I was going to make vegan. I decided on stir fry, Alfredo and tacos. Those three meals are ones that we eat pretty regularly at home. I found a recipe for the vegan Alfredo sauce that I decided to make. I usually buy that sauce in a jar and there are some vegan Alfredo sauces to choose from, but I decided I was gonna make it and it was simple and I'm glad I did. Then I made out my meal plan for the five days. Next, I decided which ingredients needed to be sw switched out um, for something plant-based. And then from there I did the grocery shopping. The hardest part for me was sticking to my meal plan. Often I'll abandon the plan to dine out but I decided dining out wasn't going to give me the full vegan experience I wanted. And bonus, I lost three pounds during the challenge. However, I do believe it's entirely possible to be a fat vegan. 
So there's that. Sarah, will you tell us about your vegan journey? Well, um, I really think that this has been one of our most fun and interactive challenges in a long time. My favorite part truly was the support that we gave each other throughout the process. Everything from offering suggestions and recipes to sending pictures every day of what we were cooking up. Some of my favorite pictures were of the expressions on Elsie's face as she tried new things. Now, this wasn't really an out of my comfort zone challenge because as you heard, I lived vegan for stretches of time before. Nothing as strict as five days in a row. So there's a little more planning this time, but for a while, several years ago, Bill and I started eating vegan one day a week. And every time we visit Danny or when Danny comes down here, we generally choose to eat vegan meals. So to give myself a challenge, I look for some new topics to cover. Unfortunately, I made the grave error of investigating just how vegan wines are. Much to my horror and absolute dismay, I discovered that most wines undergo a fining process, whatever that obviously stupid process is, that usually <laughs> uses agents that are animal derived. While those products are used to grab things out of the wine and are then separated out, it's still clearly not a vegan product in the end. After crying a little, I did some additional slightly panicked research in the middle of the Kroger liquor store at 9.30 at night on Wednesday. Was that Wednesday night or Tuesday night? That must have been Tuesday night before we started. And I found that many winemakers are dropping the animal derived fining agents and starting to use something called bentonite, which is clay based and vegan friendly. Some wines are even unfined or unfiltered and those are vegan too. I'm happy to report that I found a delicious red called Dow that is a current favorite. One of the things that does become pretty clear when living vegan is that reading food labels is a total must. Even the most innocent non-animal based foods can have something totally unexpected. Not only that, but some of the unpronounceable ingredients can be suspect too. I was looking at a plant-based dressing that I thought would be vegan based on the ingredients but it didn't say it was vegan, unlike a different plant-based dressing of the same brand. So I found an app called Spoonful that will actually tell you if a food is vegan. It was surprising to find out that some preservatives could possibly be animal-based. So foods with them won't make a vegan claim. Interesting side note, and maybe a bit of a crossover episode, the app let me scan five items for free, but then I had to subscribe. Thanks to a previous fabulous Siren Soapbox challenge, I totally didn't fall into that trap. Jess, how much fun did you have? It was fun. It was definitely challenging. And I have actually thought about going vegan just for the health benefits and for the environment. And honestly, I could do without meat. Cheese, however, is my big downfall. Really all dairy. So I was very curious to do this challenge and see how hard it would be. Turns out, way harder than I thought. Animal byproducts are in places you would never think of, like some oatmeal. I hit the grocery store with a rough idea in mind and checked labels and was some, somewhat successful. Living on an island, sometimes selection can be pretty slim when not trying to find vegan stuff. I'm not going to lie, I was really worried I was not going to be able to find a vegan cheese and have to do five days without, but I did. I didn't really care for the flavor of it, though. The flavor was not bad, but the texture was kind of weird. I'm a texture person, so maybe a different kind of cheese would be better. And Mary and Sarah both shared some delicious looking cheeses that were vegan, so might have to try to venture out to find those. I did stick with it, and I had some very tasty Beyond Meat hot dogs, which were spicy. And of course, guacamole is always a good choice. My favorite meal, however, was a tofu ramen from a place near my work. I had some leftovers of that, which reheated really well, and I will probably end up getting it again soon. In the end, this was way harder than expected, and I don't know if it's something I could do forever, but I will probably end up making some consistent different choices in my shopping. Elsie, was this a challenge for you? To date, this has probably been the most difficult challenge for me and also the most eye-opening. I am very much on the other end of the food spectrum, and this is not by choice. I am quite possibly the world's pickiest eater, and I have been ever since I started eating solid food, much to my mother's chagrin. I have never liked fruits and vegetables, and ironically, I am a huge animal lover and hate the fact that I eat them. But other than grains, what else is there? 
I have gone as far as thinking about getting hypnotized to try and gain a newfound appreciation for eating plants. It does make me feel sad and feel like I'm missing out when I see people eating fresh, crisp, colorful salads. And then I taste it and it tastes like grass. And I know a lot of people will not understand and it makes me wish that there is a taste of vision so you guys can experience food the way that I do. That being said, I did take this as an opportunity to try new foods that I had tried many years before. I hear repetition helps when trying new things. Sadly, I am still not a fan of many fruits. I do eat potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, and edamame, and I can drink smoothies as long as there is no banana in them Ugh. and hummus. My routine was typically a smoothie, oatmeal, or cereal with almond milk for breakfast, a peanut butter tortilla and mac and cheese, vegan mac and cheese for lunch, and a bean burger or pasta for dinner. Snacks were typically a nut of some kind, and I really, really love off the eaten path chickpea crisps. The biggest surprise for me was just how many foods had some form of animal product in them, like red dye is typically made from beetles, brown sugar is sometimes processed with bone char, I don't even want to think about glute, gelatin and that kind of stuff really makes me wonder about what's in more of these processed foods. Like during this challenge, I read somewhere that shredded cheese doesn't stick because of wood pulp in it. And now I wanna do Dr. Ian's fast burn in whole food eating again. I am looking into getting my meat and dairy sourced locally for a more quote unquote animal friendly option. And I'm also going to start incorporating a meatless Monday from now on. TC, has this experience changed the way you look at your food? Well, it definitely changed the way I look at vegan. Once upon a long time ago, I flirted with the idea of becoming a vegetarian. At the time, I rarely ate meat, mostly because I don't like to handle raw meat. Black beans and rice, lima beans with dill and butter, those were my go-to meals. My lifestyle is a little different now. My current diet is low carb, which includes a lot of meat and dairy. So going vegan was a bit of a stretch for me. And we really don't cook at home a lot. So for this challenge, I wanted to see what it would be like to go vegan without completely changing my lifestyle. First surprise, there is a large vegan selection at our grocery store here on the island. I really did not expect this. And when I discovered it was the case, it felt like Christmas. I was tempted to buy lots of things and try them. Not necessary for a five-day challenge. So I held back a little and purchased a few items. I planned dinner for the next few days and bought just what I'd need for that. I also bought some snacks for a little social gathering we were having at our place. Next surprise, many of our restaurants have vegan options, though they won't call them vegan. I contacted one of the restaurants to ask if the fries were made in vegetable oil. I told them I was eat eating vegan for a few days. They confirmed that the fries were made in vegetable oil, but were quick to add, they do not claim any item is vegan because they have a very small kitchen. I appreciated their honesty and I understand that in a small kitchen, lots of ingredients might touch each other. Either way, I counted those fries as vegan and got them on the side of a Beyond Burger, also on the menu. Another surprise, Beyond Burgers are delicious. There are lots of foods that I didn't expect to be vegan that are, like Oreos and Thin Mints and saltines, and things I thought were vegan that aren't, like dry roasted peanuts, the only non-vegan thing I ate over the last six days. This challenge was fun. I discovered a vegan restaurant on island that is freaking delicious, and I loved saying, I'm vegan. I learned to check everything. Google was my friend for this challenge, and while I may cut back on eating meat a bit, I'm looking forward to eating cheese again. One of the best things about this challenge was the excuse to reach out to my niece, Danny, for advice and tips. Danny has been vegan for over 12 years. She decided at a very young age that she didn't want to eat meat and she gave it up at age 18. I have always been proud of her for holding to her values and living the lifestyle she feels led to live. Danny is a strong, confident, beautiful woman and I am proud to be related to her. She is one of my brother's best accomplishments. I don't think I've ever told her how much I admire her. She is one of my very favorite people. I am also proud that Danny is stepping out of her comfort zone to join us on this episode of Siren Soapbox. Please help me welcome Danny Cole as our expert guest tonight. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. 
<laughs> also joining us tonight is our longtime listener and biggest fan and challenger for this episode, Bill Cole. Woo! Welcome oh, back, yeah. Bill. <laughs> so, Danny, I'm curious, what led you to the decision to live a vegan lifestyle? Um, well, I have always really loved animals and always felt really um, connected to animals. And so when I did stumble upon some footage of factory farming and saw that what I was seeing was completely legal and not a problem, I was pretty horrified by it. And I immediately stopped eating animal products. And I was, it was kind of difficult at the beginning, but that was a million years ago. So there wasn't all the replacements back then. Um, yeah, I just, it was, it just started for, from how much I love animals. And then the more that I read up about, um, the state that our planet is in and, um, things like that, it just was really easy choice. So what were some of your challenges when you first got started in becoming a vegan and have they gotten easier as people are becoming more aware? Uh, it's much easier now. Um, one of the biggest problems, I think it's kind of uh, difficult to talk about because I feel like I was kind of conditioned from the beginning to learn to not talk about it as much because when you first, if, it's, if you're doing it from an ethical standpoint and it's your morals that's you know leading you to this lifestyle, then you find it hard to believe that other people know about it already, know about the, the treatment of the animals. And so <clears throat> you want to tell them because you're like, I wish I would have known someone. I wish someone would have told me. So you kind of want to say, this is what's really happening. This and this is so sad because you, you know, you believe that the people that you're talking to are great people, of course, and they, they wouldn't, they wouldn't want to participate in that. And so you want to tell them, but then if you do tell them, then a lot of time it's not received very well. And so it's really hard to talk about. Um, what was your question? Oh my God. <laughs> I'll tell you, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could not eat meat if I had to kill the animal and prepare it myself. Mm -hmm. But that's probably a better way than the factory farming like you're talking about now. Like there's a movie called Cowspiracy that I refuse to see because then I would not eat anything ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's uh, like I said, it's just you think that the people that you know and that you interact with in your life, you're like, they would want to know this. They would want to know because this is terrible, but people don't want to know. And it, I mean, I don't mean to generalize like that, but it just it is a lot easier to not know. And it's a really hard thing to face. And so um, I learned really early on in my uh, veganism that I needed to just be a quiet vegan and just eat my veggies in peace and not bother anybody or about it because it can be a really difficult conversation to have. And um, so, yeah, I learned really quickly to just kind of not bring it up. So talking about it <laughs> makes me a little nervous. Um, I don't wanna make anyone upset or anything. Um, but it is, so the hardest thing at the beginning was just, um, the reality of trying to eat vegan food in front of people that felt automatically judged by it. And I wasn't judging anyone. I wasn't trying to sound judgmental or look judgmental, but if I sat down with my little spinach spaghetti or whatever I was eating, it, it came up a lot in the break rooms of the places I was working and it was pretty difficult, um, just interacting. But then again, that was in Kentucky in the South. And um, it was a long time ago. And now it's much easier. It's easier to find food. It's easier to talk about. It's easier um, to cook and to you know go to restaurants. It, everything about it is so much easier now. And I imagine more people are sort of living that lifestyle mm -hmm. or at least part-time eating vegan. So you probably have more people that understand it now than they did then, I guess. Yes, definitely. Um, initially it was, um, it was really difficult just like to even have someone come over and be like, I'll cook. I'm still a good cook. I promise. And it was, it was kind of hard to convince people to, to hang out, but 
it's um, now it's it's definitely a lot easier. A lot of people are way more open to it and way more educated about it and um, just more interested in it altogether. So I work with uh, one of my friends at work. She is vegan. And whenever we do a potluck or whatever, I sometimes offer to you know, make something vegan for her. And she's like, I appreciate it, but I'm not going to eat it. And I think it's because she doesn't trust other people yeah. to truly understand what it means to be a vegan. And after this challenge, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, it's hard to fully believe that someone completely understands the task. And on top of that, I don't know if she has had this experience, but I know that I've been told by numerous people that they were going to sabotage me and put meat in my food. So oh, it's awful. It's hard to be like, yeah, sure. I'll eat that. Cause at the same time, you're like, well, did you pour bacon grease in here? I don't know. <laughs> don't want that's it. awful. That's a friends episode. They do that to Phoebe on an episode of friends. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, poor Phoebe. I, <laughs> I would never do something like that. That is truly horrible. I'm sorry. That really sucks that people give you such a hard time for that. I mean, is there, if there was one thing that you wish non-vegans knew about being a vegan, what would it be? Um, I mean, I think that there's been so much progress that back then when I first became vegan, it would have been just like to just tr- treat me like a, a meat eater. I'm just a regular person. Um, and just to- <laughs> Um, but now it's it's so much easier and I I haven't felt judged for it in in quite some time honestly it's it's been nice it was really just the very first few years was was difficult and I wish that I had learned a way to express that to people but I was never really able to you know fully explain that I'm not mad at you for eating what you eat. So don't be mad at me for eating what I eat. Right. Yeah. It so, cracks me up that when, when Jess said she was considered being vegan for the health benefits. And I'm going to tell you one night for dinner, I ate laced potato chips and Oreo cookies. And it was, <laughs> it was completely vegan. <laughs> so, yeah. That's another thing my friend told me she, when when she first told me that she was vegan, she said she does it because, you know, for the same reasons Danny does, she said, it's not necessarily for health reasons because you can be fat and be a vegan. It's just so much processed food, I guess that's vegan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I first became a vegan, it was definitely the healthiest I could have ever been because there wasn't vegan cheese and there wasn't vegan burgers. There was just vegetables and fruits. And I mean, I had a ton of energy and I felt great, but I really love vegan cheese now. And I'm really glad it's around. (laughs) So I have noticed that I feel less tired, even though I did take a nap after work today, but in general, I do feel less tired. Did anybody else notice a change in their mood or energy levels, behavior, anything over the last five days? Considering the, the night before I started, I had to spend an, uh, 45 minutes in the Kroger liquor store finding vegan wine and still get up at uh, 4.15 to work out. I was still pretty tired after my first vegan day. So I did not feel any less tired. And I really no. didn't feel any less tired the whole week. And I think part of my problem is, is I don't know that I got enough protein. You know, mm-hmm. even though you try to get the right amount of protein and you, you substitute other kinds of protein with working out every morning, I don't know that I got enough protein. So I was pretty tired by the end of the day. I mean, I literally almost, I mean, Bill, you remember I got home and I literally had to take a, I mean, I passed out getting home. I was so tired. I'm fighting a cold, so I didn't notice, I couldn't really notice any of the changes physically just because I'm fighting a cold. So say on day two, I um, maybe ate an egg because I was needing some protein. I'm like, well, at least it's not meat. Um, but I, I was <laughs> feeling really weak. I needed, I needed some protein. Um, but today I noticed that after I ate, I felt like I had energy usually after I eat. Sometimes I feel kind of like bleh and whatever, yeah. but um, I felt like I had more energy today after, you know, a couple of days of doing this. I want to make a, a comment if I can about when 
uh, Danny first started this, and people routinely gave her a hard time. They still they still do. I don't think it's as bad as it used to be. But it was so frustrating because I know it hurt her. It hurt her feelings. Uh, but she was very dedicated to that lifestyle and for a very uh, good reason. Um, and I, I would think, okay, you there. Everybody that would comment about her being a vegan, all of those people also avoided certain foods for whatever reason. You know, maybe maybe there were allergies. They avoided food for allergies. They avoided food because they didn't like the taste of it. They avoided everybody avoids certain foods. But if you talk to somebody about veganism, it's automatically, or it used to be anyway, as though you're you, you know you're saying I'm a pagan witch and I'm going <laughs> to cast spells on you. I mean, all she was doing was avoiding animal-based food. She was still eating food, just like the rest of us. She just it wasn't like on a things. hunger strike. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but so that was that was one of the frustrating things for me as as her father. Um, is just seeing how people responded simply because she avoided certain foods when everybody in the room avoids certain foods. So it's not, it's not anything horrible. It's just choosing to avoid certain foods and for a good reason, because if you investigate how we grow our food, our meat-based food, it is pretty horrible. Yeah, I quit drinking cow's milk years ago because I saw some YouTube video about poor mama cows getting their calves taken from them. And then I guess they just keep breeding them so that they can milk them. I don't really know how it works, but it was pretty sad. So I was like, well, that's it. I can't drink cow's milk anymore. But then I was still eating cheese. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. It is crazy. We have this whole conversation in the chat, which I'm going to try to bring alive in this, uh, in our podcast. And that is about how, what it's okay to eat has changed over time and is different in different areas. Um, at, what started the conversation actually was um, the belief that somebody expressed the belief that in X amount of time, it'll be more normal to be vegan than to not be, that that, that will become the norm. People will and, and it has to do with how animal rights have changed over time and, and what it's okay to do has changed over time. And that started this whole conversation about how eating different things is different in different areas. Like in the US, it's okay to eat a pig, but it's not okay to eat a dog. But in other countries, it's okay to eat a dog, but we all think that that's horrible. One of the things um, that I think I was involved in the conversation you're talking about. <laughs> I didn't um, want to call you out, Bill. That's okay, I was waiting okay. for you to do that. That's okay. <laughs> if you look back over the history, uh, human history, and you try to um, chart the progress of, uh, of being um, civil, of being, what you find is, uh, you know, if you go back thousands of years, People, human beings were thrown into a pit with lions and fought to the death, right? And as we became uh, more civilized, those types of things fell by the wayside because in general, overall, human beings became more concerned about the life of other human beings. And then we started becoming more concerned about the lives of other beings, not just human beings. There was a time when we domesticated dogs and used them for work to help uh, guard areas and to help hunt. And we really didn't, as human beings, give much regard to dogs other than what we could use them for. And now we have them lying on our couch and feeding them treats by hand. We I use them for that, snuggles and love. Use them for snuggles, yes, for snuggles. <laughs> and I think that as, uh, the, as humankind, uh, progresses and becomes more and more civilized, in general, we become more uh, concerned with the value of life of other living beings as well. And I'm not suggesting that this is going to happen in our lifetime, necessarily, particularly mine, because as the sirens have pointed out many times, I'm very old. Um, <laughs> but as uh, perhaps my uh, grandchildren or great-grandchildren, which I don't have great-grandchildren yet, by the way, but um, 
perhaps as the, as they uh, start to age, they'll see that the lives of animals are being uh, treated in a in a better way, and that we are becoming more and more kind. And as technology creates other things that we can eat, that we will be less likely to kill other things in order to eat them. And I'm saying all this fully aware that I'm a bit hypocritical because I do eat meat. Um, but I'm also uh, aware enough to be able to look and observe these changes. I think those changes will continue. The reason that I sent this challenge to all of you is I've told you this in the past and I genuinely believe that the sirens are doing good things and you're sending good messages out to people and that listeners gain things by being a part of your audience. And so I wanted to open up the door for people to think about this issue and how we do treat other living things, not just other humans. It is interesting. Um, Like sometimes I compare living on St. Croix to living in a small neighborhood in the seventies in the States. Um, I just feel like we're in that kind of space and time. And there still is cockfighting here on the island. And actually, since I moved here, I have nothing to do with that. I'm just giving you a space and time. (laughs) They made that illegal, but it still is done. There are two locations where we still have cockfights here on the island. And um, some people see that as that's, that's part of a culture, although I would argue against that. But it just, it's, it kind of shows how the way that we see and treat animals is evolving over time. And really pretty quickly, I think. I think that like a big part of why I've thought about it is also because of the environmental aspect of it. And um, it's very interesting to me because actually when I met Danny was we were working at an aquarium way back in the day. We won't talk about how long ago that was, Um, but you know, as working in an aquarium, obviously people there were very passionate about the environment too. And, you know, Danny didn't, I knew that she was vegan and and she talked to a lot of us about it, but she probably felt like she, you know, was going to become across as preachy or something like that. But, you know, working in an aquarium, we should all be very passionate about the environment and the environmental aspect of, of being vegetarian or vegan and you know even if somebody could maybe start vegetarian and kind of work their way into vegan you know maybe that would be a a gateway vegan (laughs) gateway vegan vegetarianism is the gateway drug to veganism (laughs) yes so uh, I would say if there was any place in the world that should have been accepting of being a vegan would have been the aquarium. And sadly it was not. And I, yeah, it, it just in general is a toxic environment to begin with. So I hope you don't take any of that personally <laughs> because, oh God, that's a whole nother show in and of itself. But I'll that's, see. Yeah. No, see, there, there were as as her father, and uh, and then I would. She wasn't living uh, at home at that time, but but Danny and I talk all the time. We're very close, and and she would call me, and she'd be crying, and she would talk about how she ate her lunch in the stairwell again, so that people wouldn't bother her. And I can't tell you how badly I wanted to go down there and just Will Smith their ass all over the place. Everybody. <laughs> <messed> <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that, that nicely played. <laughs> yeah, it, that's if there's anything I hope that people learn from this episode is just, you know, treat people kindly. And that's being a vegan doesn't affect anybody. If anything, it's helping our environment. Right. Like, it only affects you. Period. Yeah. Who cares what somebody else is putting into their body? I mean, it did affect my children too, because I fed them what I was eating (laughs) on the last day. I said, I'm making that vegan Alfredo sauce tonight. And they said, we're on our way to Jim and Jack's with dad. I was like, all right, whatever. So I'm just going to eat it for lunch the next couple of days. It was kind of fun to come up with like a vegan snack for all of our guests. We had tortilla chips, 
with uh, salsa, guacamole, and hummus. And, and it was like, look, it's a vegan snack. Everyone else just saw snack. Right. Didn't matter. <laughs> right. So did anybody, or actually, I just want to ask everyone the same question. What is your new favorite vegan product that you discovered this week? I'll go first since my soapbox is first. It was the uh, follow your heart Parmesan cheese. That stuff tastes just like Parmesan cheese. And I heated some up on a tortilla last night for a late night snack and it melted really nicely. So that was my yeah, favorite that, thing. That was much better than the Mexican shredded cheese. That was pretty. Was that the Daya brand? I think so. It didn't. Yeah, that it doesn't taste like anything. No, the um, uh, chow cheese and the follow your heart cheeses, those are the, those are the best ones. Yeah, the Parmesan is really good, follow your heart. I actually, follow your heart also has feta crumbles for, um, for, mm -hmm. for the salad. I had that, that was really good. So those mm -hmm. looked good. And the, picture. Um, Kroger has a Simple Truth vegan ranch that was really good. Oh, I bought some of that too, it's delicious. Yeah, I bought I bought some kind of ranch. I don't know what it was. My favorite wasn't necessarily a food. It was anything from Eden's Vegan Eatery on St. Croix. All of that food was so unbelievably delicious that I would just eat it, whether I was vegan or not. It was so good. Now, is that yeah. restaurant strictly vegan? Yeah, it's why it's called Eden's Vegan Eatery because it's vegan. <laughs> So they just stuck it right there in the name to make it clear for most people. But you can still ask. <laughs> That's my favorite that part about this conversation so far. So, Danny, what are we going to do about our, our friend Kim? I mean, so Kim Crawford. So She's oh. not wine. I mean, because you don't want to ask the question to, to somebody who, who is, you know, clearly vegan, not just because they want to say they're vegan, but because they truly are vegan for a reason. Well, how far do we go with it? You know, I don't say, hey, how far are we going to go with this, right? <laughs> but I mean, how far are we going to go? <laughs> right? I yeah. mean, you know, you, you read about it, and it's, it's not supposed to have anything in there, but they are using something that's mm -hmm. derived from 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 an animal based product, yeah. it's all gone so wait, at the end. But you kind of lost me there. Does Kim Crawford? Does she say she's vegan? Kim Crawford, he, they, their their uh, the winemaker uses this non <clears throat> this animal based okay, um, product to whatever it is to to it's not the filter, but the fine in the fining process for their wine. Right, the I get that. But I, I just I got confused when you said somebody who says they're vegan. You like Danny and I are talking like, about like if we're if we're okay. like if because uh, not that Danny and I have ever sat on the couch and had a bottle or two of Kim Crawford together. <laughs> I mean that's never happened ever. <laughs> mm -mm. No, um, but I don't know. You know, you. Yeah, um, I went to, um, I think it was at Whole Foods. It was a, like a good number of years ago. And I was talking to their wine person there about which wines were vegan. And he told me that the process that they use at the end of making the wine that's not vegan is completely outdated and almost no wines do that anymore, like at all. So I was so shocked that Kim Crawford wasn't vegan because this, this guy went on and on and on with all of his little facts and I completely thought it was I mean this was all this, this was long enough ago for me not to have thought to google it I was just like okay uh -huh. a person told me this so he's probably right I mean he was like their little wine expert but he said that the way that they wait they make wines now is so much faster and more efficient that they don't have to do all like because sometimes they'll use fish bladders I mean, there's like a million different ways that they finish it up and it's also gross. And he said, it's really not common for people, for winemakers to do that anymore. And so I didn't really give it another look. Hmm. Yeah, I, 
really just wanted Jolly Ranchers mostly because my daughter has like a 25 pound bag of Jolly Ranchers and I just needed something sugary. So I Google it and Jolly Ranchers are not considered vegan, not because of the ingredients that are in them, but because of, I guess the processing, wherever they make them, Mm -hmm. they must process other things like milk and nut or nuts would be fine, but you know, other things that aren't considered vegan. So they can't call Jolly Ranchers vegan because they come out of the same place. Yeah. I don't really put too much into that. If I am eating a snack that is itself vegan, but it's manufactured on the same equipment, I don't, my intention is still a vegan food and it's still technically a vegan food. It just may have crossed paths with a a little drop of milk at some point. And it's still I don't worry too much about that part of it. Well, I didn't worry too much about it either, Danny. <laughs> and I had several Jolly Ranchers. That <laughs> <laughs> That's how I felt about the French fries. I love the fact that the restaurant was honest and said, we don't call anything at our restaurant vegan because we have a very small kitchen. I'm like, well, they're, they're completely taking ownership of that. And I love that. But if you're frying up your fries in vegetable oil, I'm going to eat those fries when I'm vegan. Mm-hmm. And they were good. Elsie brought them to me. So it was mostly her fault anyway. Yeah, mostly her fault. So things are. <laughs> the Beyond Beef, you said that, is, is that the place that had the Beyond Burger? Yeah. So we use the Beyond Beef for the tacos and it was delicious. So we had guests over and we grilled and they made um, a pork something. Like it's long. A pork tenderloin. Yes. And then they made um, chicken and I bought Beyond Burgers and he grilled those. So it was really delicious. I ate it plain. I dipped some of it in the vegan ranch, but it was really delicious. Yeah. I imagine they didn't have that kind of substitute 18 years ago, Danny. Or 13. How long ago has it been? 12 years. But I <laughs> None of the numbers I said. At 18. <laughs> Yeah, she she started as vegetarian. How long were you vegetarian before you went vegan? Um, I was 18. And then so it was probably like three years. Something like that. Two years. The gateway. (laughs) I felt guilty the whole time I was a vegetarian, though. Every time that I would eat a Snicker bar, I'd be like, oh, the poor cow that gave its milk to be in the snicker. Felt so, guilty. so as soon as I went vegan, I felt a million times better just because I didn't feel guilty about it anymore. So beyond me, what, what is it? Like what's in it? Does anybody know? Google it. Are you going to Google Delicious it? Delicious spices. Literally yeah. nobody knows. They I know. The I, I, they don't read, know I read the ingredients, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is now. Yeah, it's pea protein and oil and a lot of spices and, and beans. It's yeah. not necessarily good for you. It's right. not locale. Yeah. Patrick really likes them. I don't typically eat the burgers. Well, I was never really a burger kind of gal, even when I ate meat. So usually um, after he makes the burgers, I'll save the grease and like fry up some mushrooms in it. That's really Ooh, good. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds delicious. Do you go yeah, mushroom I... hunting? Sammy? Yeah. Do you go mushroom hunting? Do you really, do you like, what are they, morels? Um, I've only gotten morels one time. Um, and I've seen, I got there was a bunch of turkey tails at my grandma's and I was so excited and I couldn't wait to eat them. And then I left them there and I forgot about them. I was so upset. Oh, no. <laughs> so, but I, every time that I see a mushroom that I know I can eat, I immediately second guess myself. I'm like, I'll probably die. So I'm just not going to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. <laughs> yeah, so, mushrooms are a freaky thing. Are, are you guys eating the mushrooms in place of the wine? Is that what's happening or what? <laughs> <laughs> there's an idea (laughs) rum is vegan and i live on an island that makes rum so that's been nice it's actually i've looked at this whole uh challenge as a way to eat all the things i can't eat when i'm doing low carb so i've been eating pasta and potatoes and all of the good stuff that i i can't eat on low carb that was really fun 
Yeah, whiskey is also usually vegan, except for my favorite kind, which has honey in it. So I was without my honey whiskey for the five days. There are a lot of crackers with honey in them. I was just trying to find crackers. Like saltines are fine. That surprised me. But other, a lot of crackers have honey. So that was a bummer. Triscuits are vegan, or at least according to the ingredients. I think I just learned today or maybe late last night that if, if something is fortified with vitamins, it's not considered vegan. Maybe like, it's where yeah. some of the vitamins come from. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I, I just had to Google everything. And I was surprised so many times. There's so many things I just thought I couldn't eat. Like the very first day that was vegan day that I forgot was vegan day until Merhaj sent a message saying, hey, everyone, don't forget to go vegan today. I had already eaten some saltine crackers. And I was like, oh, darn, I already messed up. And then I went about my day and it was like two days later, just for the heck of it, I Googled our saltine crackers vegan and they are all that whole time. I could have been eating saltines, but the one thing I thought was, I know the thing that I thought was safe, those peanuts that happen to be dry roasted, not vegan. So that's how I messed up. Yeah. That surprised me. Mm -hmm. I know I, me too. And I had to, and after I learned that that was not vegan, then I just Googled everything, everything that I ate, whether I thought it was vegan or not is milk vegan. Milk is not vegan. (laughs) (laughs) Tracy, your, that little slip up also inspired me to Google everything from that point. Cause I would have totally just assumed that the peanuts were vegan. You know what? Dino pulled them out of the refrigerator and he's like, Oh, I guess you can't have these. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're nuts. He's like, are these vegan? I said, I don't know. And I Googled it. I'm like, oh crap. I already ate those. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure that Danny, when you started, you probably messed up a time or two. Mm -hmm. Well, like I really just ate fruits and vegetables and like rice. I hardly ate anything else because I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know any other vegans. And like I said, it was long enough ago to where I didn't just whip out my phone and Google stuff. And so I'm sure that I made some mistakes. Um, it, I know that I did once I started eating other things, once there was more stuff, I started to look at other, you know, pre-made meals and things like that. Like, well, oh, I could just, this is probably vegan. It's falafel. It should be fine. And Sometimes it's just not, <laughs> but I read, I read the heck out of those labels. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was happy to find that the Zatarain's jambalaya was, it doesn't claim that it's vegan, but there was no meat product in the, in the mix. Mm-hmm. So that made me happy. Cause I like that stuff. Mm-hmm. It's awfully nice when there's that little leaf on it and says vegan, I'm like, yes, it takes well, all the guessing out of it. Yeah. yeah, that's true. But then I was reminded of the episode that we, when we talked about, sh- I don't know, shark finning or something and safe people safe. paying, for, yeah, people paying for the tuna or the tuna safe labels or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's no, there's no check. Yeah. Someone's just paying for that label. Thanks for ruining everything. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, you grow a lot of your own food, don't you? Yeah, it's definitely hey, that's a good way, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely the easiest in the summertime. I just walk in my backyard and there's my dinner. Nice. I wish I could those, do that. That's cool. Those poor bees that have to pollinate all that stuff. <laughs> She's so, single-handedly okay. saving our bees. <laughs> I, know. I have a I have a an avocado tree down the hill. And Dean went down the other day to check on the tortoises for me. And he said, there are so many bees around the avocado tree. It is buzzing. I thought the thing was going to pick up off the ground. It was buzzing. Wow. So loud. He's looking around to see if there's something mechanical running and it's the bees <laughs> on the avocado tree. And I'm like, yes. Have they, have they created a hive there? I don't, I don't know of a hive. Oh, but you know what I do have? I planted a mango tree like three years ago and I have my first three little baby mango spouts this year. Oh, that's, that's exciting. So I'm probably not going to share them <laughs> with anyone. Thanks a lot. So do you have some go-to recipes that you could share with, with everybody? Um, well, sure. I, um, I do cook a lot from home. I, uh, loved making, I love making stir fries. So probably not really your thing, Elsie, but, um, <laughs> 
I, I love every vegetable so much though, that I will just throw every veggie in a pan. And then I use, um, Creole seasoning on everything. And so everything's just a little bit spicy. Usually add either some rice noodles or actual rice. Um, when I first started, um, cooking at, you know, in my own home, when I, as a vegan, I made all of the fun stuff like the Alfredo sauces and things like that. But now I usually just like toast up some veggies and eat them. So nothing too fancy, but you know. Yeah. But that's like the equivalent of slapping together a turkey sandwich, probably, you know, it's yeah. just like kind of your go-to thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I definitely feel like it's the easiest thing to make. Cause you really just, if it's, if it's nothing that you're chopping up, there's really no prep work. You rinse the veggies off and throw them in a skillet with some seasoning. And, um, it's the easiest, fastest thing to make. As we were, uh, working through this, uh, uh, challenge and everybody started sharing different dishes and all of that. It reminded me back uh, several years ago when Danny came to visit us here at this house for the first time. And um, I, I said, well, give me some recipes so we can cook for you or whatever. And, and it was a very hectic period. She says, just don't worry about it. And she came in, she walked through, she started grabbing some ingredients. She put a pan on the stove and within 20 minutes, she had whipped up something that was absolutely delicious. I have no idea what was in it. I did see her going to backyard. I think she put some grass or something in there at one point, but uh, <laughs> it was clover. delicious, whatever she made. So the reason I say that is uh, once you start, if you commit yourself to that lifestyle and you learn what ingredients meet the criteria and which ones don't, uh, I was amazed at how quickly and easily she was able to put together a truly delicious meal just with stuff that we had here um, that was already vegan, that met the criteria for being vegan. So it is easy once you dedicate yourself to it and you do some learning, you know, some time goes by, it becomes, I don't know, you can answer this, Danny. I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn on it, but it seems like it's just uh, second nature for you at this point. Yeah, I, I was going to say exactly that. It's It's really easy after you've been doing it for a while, especially since like I said earlier, there wasn't really that much vegan stuff for me to choose from aside from fruits and veggies. So I learned how to make everything from home anyway. I didn't trust much of the food that was already out. So I learned how to make ranch dressing and I learned how to make, um, you know, cashew cheese and anything that you could buy that was already made. I was making it myself anyway. And so it all just became really simple. It was just understanding the ingredients that I'm using over and over again. Yeah, but we're talking to a person who makes her own candles and hatches butterflies. It's not really simple for some of us. <laughs> do you it's still very make your for you, but do you still make your own ranch and things like mm -hmm. that? Yeah. yeah. Um, not to like sound snobby, but I feel like some of the some of the finished products, like the vegan Alfredo that you can find on the shelf, I did buy that and I ended up adding so much spice to it because it just it was just underwhelming. So that's what I was worried about I, because I don't know when I, I always, almost always buy the jarred Alfredo sauce, but I was worried somehow that if it, that these people had to replace the tasty stuff with vegan stuff that they were going to fuck it up. So yeah. I did it myself. Yeah. A lot of time it comes out pretty bland, especially since they don't want to, I feel like a lot of companies that make vegan foods want to keep it somewhat healthy because a lot of people do become vegan for the health benefits. And so they don't want to add a lot of salt to it, but ranch needs salt. Lots of things really <laughs> need some salt in it. So a lot of the time you just really need to add your own, like, even if you buy what's on this shelf, you just add a few spices and it makes it so much yummier. So it's just funny not. you say that about the salt because, um, I love uh, bread and butter. Uh, mm. let, me, let me back up. I love butter. Right? <laughs> I, I only eat the bread because if I eat the butter with a spoon, people think I'm strange. So um, Sarah found some vegan bread and she found some vegan butter and we tried it, but something was just a little off. And she mentioned, she said, I think it's missing salt. So sure enough, I uh, made a couple slices of toast, put some of that vegan butter on it and then put salt on it. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Yeah. 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 A lot of it is lacking salt for sure. Salt will change yeah. your life. <laughs> One of the cool things about vegan is you don't have to worry all that much about what's in it. 
You know, like sometimes if you're at a restaurant somewhere on an island, here's an example. On this menu, you can get stewed chunks. And there's no way in the world normally that I would order stewed chunks, but it's a vegan restaurant. I mean, what can it be? <laughs> it's going to be some kind of plant chunk. It's not going to be all of the other stuff that you think of when you hear stewed chunks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking, what is what, what are the chunks like the mystery meat, whatever meat they could afford that day? The stuff that goes in hot dogs. <laughs> not at not at Eden's vegan eatery, but is that all vegan? Is that vegan? <laughs> Murder! You guys are just so perceptive. It's amazing. <laughs> why we, we have a go podcast back, we gotta go back to that episode where we learned pi skills and work on that a little bit <laughs> so this week we want to challenge our listeners to go on their very own vegan journey for five days just like we did and if you are already vegan and living that lifestyle, please share your favorite recipes with us. So you can do either or, or both by uh, using the hashtag Siren Soapbox on all the social medias. Bill, thank you so much for this challenge. It was a really good time. Good, I was and, worried about it. So I'm glad everybody enjoyed it. It was amazing, I had a great time. I was it. worried about it too. <laughs> And Danny, thank you so much for stepping out of your for stepping out of your comfort zone and joining us on this recording. We appreciate your wisdom and your willingness to share all of your experiences with us and our listeners. Thank you. And thank you, fellow explorer, for listening to this episode. Check out Siren Soapbox YouTube's channel. Siren Soapbox's YouTube channel for some behind the scenes footage of our vegan challenge and check out our website, sirensoapbox.com, where you'll find recipes and pictures in our blog about this challenge. You'll also be able to see what we're up to next and how you can join us on that exploration. And we certainly hope that you will. Until next time, dive in, stay curious, and be happy. <laughs> thank you guys so much for the coal takeover <laughs> i'm feeling a little outnumbered <laughs> it's close it's close yeah all right i gotta turn some lights on before this next episode i just got a message from kiki that she's just leaving the buccaneer so we have a little time to chat if we want to <laughs> it's a heck of a price for corn Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, I got a bigger Who laugh that time. Them? I got a bigger laugh that time, which proves my theory that no. any joke told over and over and over again becomes funnier. Elsie, that was you. Yeah, that was you, Elsie. Yeah, Elsie. <laughs> Come on now. My bad. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll just go ahead and mute myself now. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, wasn't that fun? What? Wasn't that fun, Danny? Yeah. You want to do it again? (laughs) (laughs) You can join our our foraging episode. (gasps) Is there really going to be one? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So I want everyone to know that as I was standing up to turn lights on, that is when I got Bill's fucking ear joke. Oh my gosh, that is funny. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Siren Soapbox. And a special thank you to C-Strings for providing our music. Snag their latest EP from iTunes today. Follow the Sirens on all the social medias and don't forget to tell your friends about us. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts. We'll catch you next time on another episode of Siren Soapbox.